Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano catch-up where normally on a Friday we look back at the main news, items, events that caught my eye in the Cardano ecosystem over the last week. It is Thursday now because I'm traveling tomorrow, but didn't want to miss another week because I missed last Friday with St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone enjoyed it that was celebrating and also the really nice win for Ireland in the rugby. But if you get value from this one, please do share it out, give the video a like, comment questions or anything I miss or even one for the algorithm, I do appreciate it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so normally I start out looking at what went out on the channel over the last week, but the last week has been a bit quiet with sick kids at home. But last night we had our usual weekly live stream, myself and Paddy were joined by All In Crypto this week to go through where Cardano is, where we think it's going. In the second half of that video, we focused a lot more on the markets and the current issues with the banking sector and what's going on with the Fed and how that potentially will reflect back on crypto. Also the news on Coinbase broke during that, so we took a quick look into that and I'll touch on that towards the end of this video as well about the letter they got from the SEC. So then we have the Cardano Foundation announced the Cardano Summit 2023 where it's going to be. Last year the event was in Switzerland and I was delighted to actually be able to get out there and meet so many people from the community, so many projects building and also meet a lot of people from the Cardano Foundation and IOG to get a better feeling for the vision of where they all see Cardano going long term and I was delighted to be able to attend. This year it's going to be in Dubai and it's going to be the 2nd to the 4th of November. So at least there's lots of notice for people that are going to be able to try and attend it. I can't say right now if I'll be there or not there. Hopefully I'll be able to be there, but we'll see how things go over the next few months, especially with the markets and where they are right now. If I don't make that, I'll definitely try and make some of the community led events. Then we have the announcement from IOG about dynamic peer-to-peer -peer networking. So this is about how relays and nodes connect to the network. So up to now, there has been a bit of manual work and where you have to list the peers that you want to connect to or that you want your relay to connect to. And you have to kind of keep an eye on them to make sure that the peers that you're connected to, that there's always enough of them still online. But now we're looking to bring in dynamic peers so this is dynamic peer-to-peer -peer, and there is an article on it here i won't go through this maybe i'll do a separate video on it but for anyone who wants to read more into it there is an article here that talks all about it and also duncan the cto goes through it i think it's on the twitter as well but i'll link this one down below so duncan has a really good video here talking all about how the networking works how the networking layer works for cardano and how peer-to-peer -peer is going to change that at the minute they're telling spos to change one one of your relays to peer-to-peer -peer, leave the other ones on the old method see how it all flows just to make sure everything's okay and the next step will be changing over some of the block producing nodes to peer-to-peer -to -peer as well it's a really great step for further decentralization on cardano and hopefully long term will help how quickly things can spread throughout the network Next up, we have Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi Finance have announced their public testnet. You can go in and try it all out. There are some guides there. And if you go into the link, I think I have it open. You can see Wi-Fi here. They are launching their DEX and BAR on testnet right now. So if you go in, you can see fairly similar to what you will have seen before in terms of these are the different pools that are there that you can get involved in. You can go in and trade, add liquidity. If you go into trade, it's nice that you have all the features in one here. I think one of the other decks has had this at one point. Maybe MinSwap had something similar. Can't remember just now, but I must dig into that. Do your normal swaps. I'm not sure on the back end how they're doing the batching or what process they're using, but it's something I need to look into. And I might do a catch-up video on Wi-Fi fairly soon once I dig into the dynamics of how it's all going to work under the hood. Another project that is on testnet right now. So I did get time to check out the meld testnet. So this is what you get when you log in. Initially, I hadn't done it because you had to or you have to use Google to log into it. Not sure why they went that route. I'm not the biggest fan of doing that, but I've done it here on a test Google account anyway. So when you come in, this is the wallet that you have. If you look up here, you can see that it's going to be a multi-chain wallet because you can see you have your Cardano address here and you also have Ethereum addresses there as well. But if you look down here, this is your wallet. So you can change up here wallet to supply and borrowing. So the wallet is fine, but supply and borrowing is what we're all really waiting for here. If you look at this, you can see on this side, I have supplied TIUSD. So I've supplied $200 worth of USD. 
and these are the other assets that i could supply on this side here it's the details of the interest rates and what's going on over here i have borrowed did the borrow go through i did yeah so i borrowed 10 ada now this is where i don't think the ui is great at all when you come in here you can click on can borrow so these are the assets that i could borrow so these are the ones that are presumably sitting in the contract that someone else has supplied and these are the interest rates that i would pay but when i click on the asset here i get the details of what it all looks like and to me this should be you can see down here there's borrow and supply or you can come up here and click borrow but when i do this i don't get much details so if i go up here i want to borrow ten thousand ada there's not not really much information if i click on confirm and click on borrow then you can see down here i get the message that isn't really visible at all new account has invalid loan to value so when i'm putting in my amounts here it's not telling me how much i could borrow based on the collateral that i've provided so we see in other systems they show you how much collateral you've provided and shows you say when i start putting in the amounts here that i want to borrow then it starts telling me what my collateral ratio would be and where my liquidation points should be as well so i think there's still a lot of work to do on the ui here hopefully it's all working under the hood and it's just the ui that needs to be changed but i think there's lots of work still to be done on that maybe i'll look deeper into it and do a full video if people are interested in that next up we have aada finance so i thought this was really interesting and a great sign to see too so you see security audit is done with vacuum labs have audited the v1 smart contracts in icon so they have some of their contracts now in icon we've talked about icon here before cardano smart contract language and toolkit by tx pipe and the cardano foundation so this is looking to really make smart contracts a lot simpler and smaller and faster i've shown some of the comparisons before it's probably a video i need to look deeper into as well on the different ways to build on cardano but i can it's great to see projects starting to use that to build full smart contracts now world mobile we had a update ama last monday from the team so we got a lot of different updates they talked about the roadmap we're not going to get the earth nodes on mainnet in q1 that was the initial target but there's a few things going on in the background and hopefully i'll be able to get mickey on fairly soon to talk about that there is a new paper coming out they are on about changing something in the consensus mechanism on the side chain that they're running so there's a few details there that i think in the next few days we should get that paper out so once we do i will do the dedicated video that i've been talking about for world mobile but some of the other updates we got so this was sharing screenshots of the upcoming air node sales ux so you can go through it here this is just for people that want to be able to get in and buy some of the air nodes to potentially start a business through owning the air nodes that's just some of the screenshots some of the other stuff was they showed the first look at the world mobile app which will be a worldwide app so there's going to be an inter integrated wallet in this fiat on and off ramps and value added services if you look at it here you can see everyone will use this also for connecting to the world mobile network you can have your did your decentralized id or your digital id connected up to the app as well and there's just some of the screenshots and it is available in the play store too another update from world mobile was the aerostat here where you can see making a test flight in the us and making calls through that we still haven't heard the date of when the first launch will be in zanzibar i think they're just waiting on sign off from another party they are ready to go whenever they get the sign off on that and once i get that information you can be sure i'll be pushing that out here other updates as well was they have talked about the next country that they're going to roll into they had said that it was going to be an asian country so pakistan is going to be the next rollout area for world mobile great to see them moving moving into other areas as well if we look at world mobile or wmt scan this is where you get all the latest information on world mobile you can see the air nodes there's a few new air nodes added since we looked at this last and this is a new section here to show people what the air nodes are actually generating in revenue so you can see the top five air nodes here that are in are actually out in the field and actually being used and you can see the revenue that they will be generating on a monthly basis so when the air node sales actually come up we should have some hard data on what the potential earning capacity is for the air nodes for people who are looking to get into them and to earn an air or to own an air node for themselves next up 
for updates we have sebastian put out this message last night about we have a hydra head open on mainnet and we featured it in today's monthly review meeting in the hydra project so the next release will be the first mainnet compatible is your use case ready so we've heard a lot about hydra or a lot of people really excited about hydra over the last year or maybe two years now that we're hearing about hydra coming so it's great to have one of the heads open on mainnet now i can't wait to see the use cases that will be there or what dApps will be able to create use cases and take advantage of the speed capacity that hydra can bring and hopefully in the cardano 360 this week we might get or next week actually we might get some more updates on what it is and what's live on mainnet now and some of the first projects that might use this and put it into action that's it kind of for cardano we did have the announcement from brian armstrong put out yesterday about coinbase received a wells notice from the sec focused on staking and asset listings wells notice typically proceeds an enforcement action i think generally there's a week or something between this Coinbase have gone back to them and asked a lot of questions about is it specific assets or what is the notice actually about. There's lots of videos dedicated to this. Maybe I'll do one at some point, but I just wanted to highlight it here for anyone who hasn't seen it. Brian is basically saying that they're not going to sit down and just take it. We've seen what happened with Kraken where they were shut down. They got a big fine. Brian has said that Coinbase are willing to go to court and try and get this worked out to see if uh, staking platforms like coinbase have to register with the sec what is the process what's expected and hopefully we'll get a lot more answers on that because up to now there's been no clarification even after kraken it was said yes they should have registered but there's no idea on what the process would actually be if an entity like that wanted to register so coinbase have come out and said that they will be fighting this and trying to get clarification on everything so long term i think this will be good like i said with everything that happened with kraken i don't think this is an attack on self-custody staking which is what we do with cardano where you hold custody of your funds this is again targeting an entity that takes control of your funds they do the work by doing the staking for you and they take a fee for that so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out i think once again it will highlight how well structured cardano staking actually is there was more i'll put links to these down below this was paul the coinbase legal team talking more more details about it and they do have a response post there or an article all about it so i'll put the links to all of that below for people who want to check it out and closing out on one more thing that the sec has been busy with and that is uh, justin sun has been sued by the sec for market manipulation so they allege that trx and btt uh, BitTorrent are unregistered securities and claim that Sun had an extensive wash trading program to boost their trading volume. And they've also charged some celebrities with Jake Paul being one of them about not declaring their, what is it? Not disclosing that they were paid for endorsing TRX and BTT. What happens with Justin Sun? We'll see where that one goes. It will be interesting to see if he is actually charged or does actually get any decent fines we see. He's trying to buy a lot of things. I think he was trying to buy a bank at one stage and Anytime there's anything mentioned about issues with companies, he's coming in with multiple millions or I think billions at some stages. So he's not short of money. So a fine on its own won't really do much, but we'll follow that one and see how it goes. Hope everyone got value from it. Share it out if you did. Subscribe if you're new. I do appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.